Freedom Hillbilly back again. What a difference a couple days make. It was minus 40 on Saturday. It's going to be 40 plus 40 today. And uh, there's the prize. Let's get to work. Oh, by the way, we just have two tools, hammer and a pry bar. <laughs> Actually three, we got the WD in the back pocket because we're gonna need that. All right, let's take a closer look here. We got, it's, it's kind of solid. There's a lot of dirt that's, you know, accumulating there. Let's see what we got. Can't see on the other side. Might have to reinforce that. Blade looks all right. Anyway, oh, this got, they're fixed. All right, we're gonna clear off some of the snow. The, uh, what, what we're really interested in are these guys here. And I think I looked at them earlier when there was no snow and it looked good. So we're gonna have to plop this off and then start working on the wiring. So let's go ahead and set up. Here we go. All right, that should do it. You're supposed to turn it, I think. Pull it out first. Yeah. How about we give it a little, a little freeing whack. There we go, that should do it. There we go. Just needed a little love tap. So you're supposed to twist it so the locking pin pops out, but it's, Held captive to a degree, so there we go. It popped out. Now we could pull it back, so, which pulls the. There's two locking pins. There's a small one for the handle, and then the whole thing for this guy. Now that those are free, we can move these handles. Unfortunately, I'm thinking this thing has to be down, but you know, there's no power to this, so. <laughs> Pretty sure the truck is supposed to be brought backward once you release that and you're supposed to angle it with the hydraulics working. Uh, now the plow is kind of jacked up and that means it's kind of wedged in. So it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a production. I'm gonna have to get the yard guy. He's gonna come on down and try and wiggle this one off. But let me work on the wiring first while it's out here or I could get access. So that part will be done. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so this handle and there's one on the other side is just attached to this plate and you can see it's curved just like the sticker all right and app pivots on this so it this arm pulls forward thus bringing that off all this is is a locking pin so as you can see that engages the frame keep it in there and then you turn it, you turn this guy. Oh, well, I can't, but this goes over this little, you can see there's a little cup that this pin engages to, to keep it in the locked position. But we want it free, so this could slide forward. And what you don't see is there's a receiver, like a boxed in, you know channel iron or something that has a long piece of metal that just slides in a little different than the fisher this has a kind of 
a leaf spring looking thing. When we get it out, we'll show you. Um, but let me clean it up and start getting the wiring. So let's get to that first. So I got this part disconnected from down here somewhere. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break off this. This is in the way, so let me get that first. that piece and there we go and time for a ball peen Like I said in a previous video, all it needs is a couple of tech screws to hold this together. That's what's holding me up. We got, we got this part that's actually the only intact piece of metal there. The rest of it's off. Oh, the last little bit. There we go. Nice. All right, let's see if we can get this out of here. There we go. In the bin. So now we can see what's going on here. We got this pin, this one inch iron rod, and then this thing is supposed to come down and slide out. So we're gonna, I wanna clean out that and see what's underneath. And this frame is really rotted out. It really is, look at this. Oops. See, get my canealer over here. You can see that this, this is part of the frame here and it's bolted to the side here. Holy moly. Let's get this wiring situated first. It's not the smartest spot, I don't think. I would personally relocate it further up because it's too close to the ground. Look how it's bent already. I think it would have been better if it's like most fishers just like plug up here, you know, where you could see it. And same with down here, this cover covers the, this is the cover for the actual hydraulic pump. And as you can see, it gets full of snow and you see how this little protrusion here, there should be a switch under there. I don't feel it. But I think that's, I think they were smart enough to bring it into the cab. Because uh, there's a little pigtail here that I can't make out. Let's work on the wiring. <laughs> okay, there's a solenoid here. It goes to the battery. Let's just start clipping zip ties. There's a zip tie. This brown wire, I think is the relay actuate, you know, power. And I'm trying to see where it actually goes. Ah, oh, there we go, two, four, five. Maybe this is going into the cab. Advanced adapter system. All right. Well, we might need, oops. We might need a new one of those. <laughs> yeah. We got blues, we got browns, we got gray. Oh look, we got spliced in here. We got we got another splice for the gray. We're gonna just cut it off at the splice points. This is the advanced adapter system. It's so advanced that we got two flying leads, three flying leads, pigtail to something we don't know. <sighs> yeah, it's advanced. 
could substitute the word complicated for advanced, and I think we'd be on the right track then. I think this just runs the lights to the vehicle. This looks like a vehicle light. This is a Ford, so I'm not really familiar with all the connectors. If, if Ford treats connectors anything like they treat fasteners, then there's no consistency whatsoever. It's the nice thing about GM, they tend to keep the same colored wires even over the years. Anyway, we're just yammering on. We gotta get, we gotta get a 516, I think. This one actually goes all the way through. Let's see what's in here. Wow, there's more than six wires, that's for sure. Let's see where it goes. It goes in here. Okay, I don't know what this thing is, but maybe we wanna take it off. Oh, that's the air filter. It's in the way. This is the fuse box. And then there's a relay box underneath that. Holy moly. This is gonna be interesting. Let's go inside. All right, so we're inside. And here's the, here's the controller. So we're gonna have to get a, uh, I'm betting that's 5 16 these screws. Great. The tech screws. Now this guy goes under there. We're gonna need a flashlight. And I think I'm feeling, oh, look, there's a switch here. This is probably part of that fuse panel. You know what, I bet this just pulls off. Well, this did. <laughs> I'm not too concerned about wrecking the plastic on this guy, but I still would like to practice. There we go. Practice clip, clip clip down and out should be another one hanging it up here oh no there's probably a screw down there yep there's a screw oh my god i gotta get some tools but we have a switch with a bunch of wires there's two four six so this has got to be powering something so we're gonna want that zip tie Anytime there's a zip tie, you know that that's part of the aftermarket stuff. Okay, got another one. Let's just clip that. And there's that infamous brown wire again. Yeah. Well, actually this is black. It has a fuse. This is some, something's fused here. Oh, there it is. 15 amp right there. Uh, let's see what Ford says that is. I'm betting they say it's a, some number. They don't actually tell you what. Oh, I was wrong. This is the first Ford I've seen where they actually have the writing, which is too small for my eyes, but hey, let's see if we can figure it out. It's beside the big number 17, so I think it's 11 down there. Can't read it, no focus. It says radio. Okay, 11 is radio, radio display dim. All right, well, I guess he just got it for power. So let's just pull that out. I'm gonna keep that. We're gonna, we're gonna unscrew this. This is where the crescent wrench comes in handy or just calluses on your fingers. And there we go, just pop it out. Let's keep it together. Ideally, this switch should have a label on it that says something that position, something else that position, because we have no idea. Anyway, this is, this is gonna need a flashlight because I'm feeling more zip ties up behind there. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can make out where the wiring out the firewall is. Let's get some of this snow out of the way. Aha, uh -huh. pretty sure it might be this guy. The, the added benefit of the winter is that wires that are normally buried get buried even more. So, ah. Yeah, that's the one, it's right there. And it comes through the firewall right here. So, gonna get some, 
I can't make it out with my poor eyesight and I'm gonna have to pull that right through. It's a metal plate, but cool. All right, let's get some tools. I'm gonna put this on pause. Yeah, it's 5 16 but I'm gonna use the, the world domination size 8 M&M because these are tech screws oh I'm just turning it and turning it and it's just there held in with some silicon there we go got it the prize wow what a what a mess of bracketry okay this I think was meant to be mounted on the dash but it weighs like a ton anyway we got it all right, so there's a tech screw right here. Holding it to the frame. There we go. All right. 213 millimeter bolts right where you see the light coming through right there and then on the other side of the firewall we have this plate that was adhesived with RTV that was nice so it's totally waterproof but there it comes there it is now I don't know if you saw this before but mice got to this harness so i'm gonna have to do some repairs all right so now this winds its way down behind or under this bracket for the air box all right so we got the this harness it's just chock full of rtv here you know they do make rubber grommets for this purpose you don't have to do this. <laughs> it's just an FYI. A lot of, I think this is what's getting dirty. Yeah, this is, this is the stuff that's. All right. All right, we'll just put this back. We don't need it. This comes out around here. This harness is just too neatly installed to be a owner installed. This has to be dealer installed, unless you're like a Turbo Yoda or a Hal from Haltech. I forget his name. There's very few people I've seen on YouTube who can do wiring well because it takes discipline, a lot of patience. There we go. Okay, this is tied into this. Good. Well, let's go to that side. Oh good. There we go. Okay. I think we got the harness. Other than this piece. We're gonna go ahead and cut that off too. Put it on the other end. It looks like there was some wiring for lights done through where this cable split. So I don't know what's going on, but I'm gonna just keep it.
keep the whole thing and figure it out later. And that's goes there. It goes there. Got the monster harness. But I'm thinking I'd like to try and disconnect the connector from the bracket so that we don't tangle up the harness and ruin it when we're pulling the other stuff apart. So I'm going to just try and clean up some of this rust. It might just be easier to just might be easier to cut this and then weld it back on. I don't know. Whoops. All right, just the bigger pry bar is always what you need. There we go. It just slides out this little little retainer. There's a little nub here to hold it in. We got it undamaged. Nice. And we can bring the whole whole harness off and then we don't have to worry about it. This, this this bracket is welded. These were bolted. Well, of course, the GoPro battery dies just when the action was coming. He came and lifted the vehicle, and we were able to separate the, the two pieces. So let's show you where we're at. So this is what pivots over that bar there. So clamps on. And they're independent, but you can see all the rust. Anyway, this makes it a little easy. I should have propped this up a little more. But um, we got this whole bracket tree we want to get off. And right now we're working on the bolts. Over here you can see I've been slicing the, the edge off of a bolt so that he could get the nut off and then pound it. Let's go on the other side. Show you what I mean a little better. Hello. We're right in the puddle now. All right, so you can see the big, the big honker bolt. That just came off. It just rusted off. Slice that one. That one I can almost push through. And we're going to keep going until the batteries die. I got one more battery on the grinder. So, hey, yeah. Then we're going to guess we're going to come back tomorrow and do the other two or three bolts. Yeah, so if Scott over at Vcor, Vhor, whatever, Scott's GM Emporium Auto Repair, and uh, he doesn't wear gloves, but I cut my finger almost to the bone once when I wasn't, and I was wearing gloves. Uh, so. I'm going to continue to wear gloves. I don't care what anyone says. Safety. Ah. And once we slice it, we're going to hammer it with a cold chisel and maybe get a socket around it. And it should be loose enough to be able to take the socket off. I'm getting full of water here. Well, battery's shot, so I'm going to pause this. All right, well, the sun is setting on another productive day at the junkyard. As the driveway engineer says, the junkyard shall provide. And I'm getting tired. Sun is starting to go down. We got the main unit off. We got the harness out all without breaking a wire. Well, one terminal broke on the big battery cable. So we're going to be coming back tomorrow so that we can get this, try and get the rest of this bracket off. I mean, that's still solid on there. Even with all this rust, I'm actually very surprised. We got, we got three or four bolts off. We got to get another three or four and then cut this part of the assembly 
I don't know, this was holding the bumper on, but this is welded here and welded here, probably welded underneath there too. And, uh, and it was bolted with this plate over here. So uh, I think this is structural steel. I'm having a hard time grinding through it, even though it is all rusted and the saw doesn't want to touch it at all. So we'll see you tomorrow. Same bat place, same bat time, and same bat crazy stuff. Hillbilly out.